Hi, I'm David Hill, Chairman of Birchall's Telecom. We're going to look today at the GPO 700 series of phones. These are the phones that formed the backbone of the British phone network for over three decades. They were produced in their millions, so let's have a look at them. Up to the 1980s, all of the phones and all the wiring in the UK was actually owned by the post office. They were also called the GPO. Um, if you wanted to get a phone in the 60s, it was a privilege that wasn't granted to everybody. The way you went about it was you filled in a form at the post office, uh, sent it in, and then they let you know if you were going to be privileged enough to get a phone. Um, the cost of a phone installation in 1966 was about £10. Um, and it rose quite dramatically by 1968 to £20. Uh, what would happen is they'd come in, do your, pho your phone wiring, hardwire a phone like this uh, back into the wall and then they would own it all. We found this phone uh, in a loft where the owner would put it waiting for the GPO to come back and collect the phone and he's still been waiting 40 years later. So we've actually got it today. This phone was preceded by the 300 series phone, so let's have a look at that. This particular model is the 706F. It was manufactured in 1966 in Scotland by AEG, who were then part of uh, GEC. Um, they were produced by various companies across the UK. So let's have a, a look a bit more closely at it. It's kind of a work of art. It's uh, the kind of thing that would be produced by engineers if price was no object. The, uh, the cradle, the, the handset, comes to pieces with threads and um, this is the, the actual uh, earpiece here. Um, it was a classic to be able to put a bug in there and many people did. It has to be reassembled completely in the right way or otherwise it won't fit back together again and then you put the thread back on it. Um, this is one of the first phones that was an all-number phone. Uh, prior to 1966, they all had uh, letters around the outside there. So let's have a look in, at the inside of it. So this is the interior of the phone. Um, it's one of the first phones that came with a PCB mounting rather than a, a standard backplate mounting. Here's the bell. Um, here are the little uh, relays that actually make the actual phone call. And here is a capacitor and there's some resistors in there. So that's what the interior of the phone looks like. This phone should still work on a modern phone network. So we've taken off the old wiring that used to go into the wall and that used to be half fixed into the wall and we've replaced it with a modern telephone socket. So what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and phone my mobile. So here's the mobile and uh, we're going to phone it and see if we can uh, get a signal. So it's... Oh, Seven, five, two, five, seven, eight, seven, right, and any second now that should ring on my mobile. And there we are, it's ringing. So it works on the modern telephone network, but it does take an awfully long time to dial. So now we're going to try and see what it sounds like uh, if we're calling a modern phone system. So we're going to call our auto attendant system and see how we get on. So it's 019 Three, three, three. OK, it's ringing. Let's have a listen to it. Thank you for calling Birchill's Telecom. For sales and general inquiries, please press 1. For broadband support, please press 2. And finally, we thought it would be interesting to compare the 706F to a modern phone. So. Here is a Grandstream modern VoIP phone. It's a lot lighter. It's got the numeric keypad. It's a lot quicker to use. It's not built to anything like the engineering standards that we have with the 706F. The 
706F is the phone that was built for 20 years. It was the backbone of the British phone systems. Um, I suspect we won't see the like of it again. Thanks for watching.